One thing that you never want to tell a narcissistic person or people that you're dealing with, whether it's your family or a friend or even your spouse, is this. You're hurting me. You do not want to tell them that they're hurting you. That's right up there with apologizing. Now, there's two main reasons for this that I'm going to focus on in this message. Number one is telling a narcissistic person that they're hurting you empowers them. Number two, it can fool you into staying in the relationship. Now, many of you are saying, but Kevin, how can we be authentic? How are we to express what's going on inside of us if we can't tell people that they're hurting us? Well, at the very end of this message, I'm going to share with you what authentic living actually looks like. Because the goal isn't to be able to walk around telling people that they're hurting you. That's not authentic living. Mm -mm. The goal is finding relationships where you don't have to say that. Let's get into this. My name is Kevin. This is The Royal We. Now, before I do continue, I want to let you know that I'm here to support you. Down in the description box, you'll find access for one-on-one -on -one appointments with me. I take telephone calls as well as video calls through Zoom, FaceTime, and WhatsApp. So if you're in a toxic relationship with family members, siblings, a spouse, or friends, and you find yourself in this place where you want desperately to tell them that they are hurting you mentally and emotionally, don't do it. Contact me instead so I can help you to understand how you can deal with this without empowering them and staying stuck in the toxic relationship with them longer than you need to be. In addition to one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, I also have a coaching program. My coaching program is live and in person each and every day. I don't just throw some videos and some reading material your way saying, peace out, good luck. I invest my time to support you each and every day. Every Tuesday night is fellowship where we come together, open up the Bible, see what the Bible has to say about living in a world full of narcissistic people. In addition to Tuesday night fellowship is Thursday night backstage pass where I share with you all the inside information about being a coach. I share with you all the technology that I use. I share with you the programs that I use. So for those of you who have a desire to be a coach, a teacher, or a healer, join the coaching program at least for a month so you can get some background inside information into what it is that I do. Now let's get into this very interesting topic. I know that it's very easy to want to tell these people how hurtful they are being, especially those that are abusive mentally and emotionally and verbally. Narcissistic people, whether it's your family members or friends or people you work with, they can be very mouthy. Their mouth can pierce like a sword. Now, words do hurt, and we all know this. As a matter of fact, the Bible has something to say about this. Jesus said, you have heard, thou shalt not kill, but I tell you, Anyone who says to his brother or sister, Raka, which at that time was a very derogatory word. Jesus is saying that person is guilty of murder. It's the same thing. We live in a society full of narcissistically abusive people who wander around murdering people that they say they love with their words. Now, is that love? No, not even close. By the way, if you're experiencing verbal attacks, verbal assaults, name calling, cussing, nothing should tell you quicker that there is no love in that relationship. But, you know, like that. That is your first sign. That person doesn't love you. There's no care in that. They're trying to kill you. They're trying to hurt you with their words. It's still an attack. Doesn't matter if someone's swinging their fists at you or swinging their sharp little tongue at you. It's still an attack. Now, watch this. Narcissistic people are looking for dominance and are looking for their position above you. And oftentimes, in a relationship, they will poke and prod and provoke you and antagonize you and the longer you hold out from saying, stop it, you're hurting me, the longer and the more ramped up they will get. It's almost like they have to get you to a point of saying, stop it, you're hurting me. Because to a narcissistic person, that is the ultimate place of power, and I'll tell you why. 
It empowers them to know that now they know exactly what to do to punish you when they need to. But also it affords them another opportunity. And do you know what that is? Something that narcissistic people call compassion. They're able to suddenly display compassion. But it's the wrong kind of compassion. The intentions are off. It's the type of compassion that an evil Hitler would, would give when there is a Jewish person on fire begging for their life. And Hitler, out of his empowered compassion, oh, I have compassion, let me, let me help you. Put it out. Now, don't mess up again. That's not true compassion. It's a flex of power. And so, to begin with, you never want to tell a narcissistic person they're hurting you because not only have they discovered your threshold, but now they have discovered where they can switch on that compassion. I'm going to share an example from my own experience. Now, when I was dealing with the ex-narcissistic in-laws that I had dealt with in my life, I reached out after a period of time. I said, hey, you were calling me names constantly, cussing me out. And in my dialogue with this person, which by the way, by the way, I never, you know, I would never promote breaking no contact. I went no contact and then I wanted to find some answers. And I said, hey, why were you doing this? What were you doing? One of the things that I got back in the message was you never said it bothered you, Kevin. You didn't act like it was hurting you. I'm like, why would I tell you it was hurting me? I'm very glad that I never told him it was hurting me. Now I'm able to see why it lasted for years. Why they were provoking me and poking me and antagonizing me for years. Because in their sick, narcissistic minds, they had to. Because they never felt they reached that place of complete power over me. And I thank God for that. I won't let them have power over me. You shouldn't let them have power over you either. But that's one of the things that they said was, Kevin, you never said it hurts you. And I remember I asked a question back, something to the extent of, wait a minute, somebody has to tell you you're hurting them in order for you to stop doing something? I was genuinely curious. Sounds strange to me. And I said, what if I was deaf? What if I wasn't able to speak? Would you continue to be verbally abusive? They wrote back in a smart alecky narcissistic way, oh, Kevin, you're not deaf or stupid, and so that's irrelevant. Oh, but I think it's very relevant because my question is about compassion. It's not being deaf. It's, it's about your level of compassion in this life. You see, I don't want somebody in my life who I have to say, please stop, you're hurting me, in order for them to say, oh, okay, I'll have compassion on you now that I know I'm hurting you. All this does is play right into what narcissistic people want. They want to be all powerful. So by finding your threshold of pain, hearing you say, stop, you're hurting me, they're then able to say, oh, I'll be compassionate on you. That's right. They're pretentious people. Narcissistic people are just pretentious. None of it is love. None of it's even true compassion. Now, so that's the first reason why you do not want to tell them that they're hurting you is because it elevates their ego. It elevates their position of power to be in this place of, aha, now I know what hurts you. Now I know where also I can exhibit compassion so that I'm looked at as a good person. But it's all fake. None of it's real. A truly compassionate person wouldn't need to push your buttons, wouldn't need to provoke you. Only a narcissistic evil person who wants to have one bullet in the chamber, so to speak. They want to know what's going to hurt you, if that makes sense. Now, number two, the other reason is that when you tell a narcissistic person, whether it's a family member, a spouse, or whomever you're dealing with, that, hey, they're hurting you, they threw their compassion, which is fake, it's not real, it's them exhibiting their power, it's them flexing, if you will, it can fool you. How so? Well, in their twist of compassion, oh, okay, I didn't know I was hurting you. Okay, I'll be better. I'll do better. You might buy into that. 
it might be kind of the answer that you think you're looking for. And in a way you might say, oh, okay, they're going to treat me better now. And you stay in the relationship. Now you're in the relationship with somebody who hurts you on purpose, trying to find what bothers you only so that then they can display compassion over you in a fake way. And you're stuck in it and you're still there. Again, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. You do not want any relationship where you have to tell somebody that they're hurting you so that they can display compassion. You want somebody who already displays compassion in their life always. Because that's not a flex of power over you. That's who they are. Now this gets into truly authentic living. Because one of the questions is, Kevin, how do we be authentic if we can't tell somebody they're hurting us? Well, first of all, telling somebody that they're hurting you is not allowing them to be authentic. Now, is it? What you're really saying is, hey, I don't like this about you. I don't like the way you're mouthing off to me. I don't like the way you're cussing me out. I don't like the way you're verbally assaulting me. It's giving them now the opportunity to put on a fake, inauthentic front for you temporarily. And that's not what you want. You don't want a fake person. Don't buy into this concept of you have to teach people how to treat you. No, no, no. If you have to teach people how to treat you, you're getting a fake version of somebody. Now, narcissistic people will play along with that temporarily. They'll let you teach them how to treat you, but eventually it's going to explode. It's going to backfire on you. All right. Truly authentic living is you being able to allow others to say what they want to say. And as early on as possible, you judge them for what they say to you. You judge them for every word that comes out of their mouth. You judge them in silence. You judge them and say, in your own mind, in your own heart, thank you for showing me that you're a mouthy person. Thank you for showing me that you like to kill people with your words. Thank you for showing me this. You say this inside of yourself. And without telling them, you say within yourself, now I know where to position you in my life. Now I know that you are not going to be my intimate partner. You are not going to be my best friend. You're not going to be somebody I'm going to stay with for a long time. This allows them to be them. And it authentically allows you to distance yourself so that you are not rained down on with their toxicity. That's what authentic living is. You see, authentic living is not telling people or teaching people, people how to treat you. Authentic living is not being involved with people at all who do not resonate with you from the get-go. You want to know what my final response was to the ex-in-laws that I was dealing with? After this person wrote me and said, Kevin, you never said anything. If you would have cried, I would have showed compassion, but you never did any of that, and I thank God I didn't. I said exactly what I just told you. I wrote back and said, I'll never tell you that you're hurting me. I'll never cry for you. Kidding me? How pretentious of you. I'll just judge you for what you show me and what you say to me. That's how I'm going to live my life. And I hope that that's how you live your life as well. As I said before, I'm here to support you. Down in the description box, you'll find access for one-on-one -on -one appointments with me. Telephone calls, video calls are available. So if you are in a situation, you are hurt mentally and emotionally, before you try to tell them that you're hurt so that you can get stuck with them being in power, reach out to me. I'll work with you so we can get through this together. In addition to that, coaching program is also available I'll be back with more videos for you right here on the Royal Wii. Before I do leave, be sure to check out one of these videos suggested by the YouTube algorithm for you. Also, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button for me, would you? And hit the bell notification so you don't miss any future videos uploaded by the Royal Wii. Be sure to like this video, share it with somebody who needs to watch it, and I'll be back with more right here on the Royal Wii. Bye.